Hello, uh, friends, colleagues, C++ 11 learners, YouTube world, and the students. Uh, this is C++ 11 tutorial 3. Here we are going to talk about using STDRA template class. Uh, these tutorials are not in any particular order, although I've tried to make it in some sort of sequence, but sometime the sequence jump has taken place. Maybe this is one of that. In order to understand this tutorial, you need to understand templates, and my ebook describes them, although that chapter needs to be updated. Without understanding templates, you can understand part of this, but not all of it. Okay. So <clears throat> Basically, C++11 came up with a STDRA template, uh, which is simpler, maybe, maybe not, than using the vector, but it's there, so sometime you can use it. And there's documentation on STDRA template. I will just type to Google, and you will see. So. I did a search with stdra template here. If you go to cppreference.com, there is this description here, and I will just kind of highlight the link for you. And the link that I just did there is this one. Okay, maybe a little smaller font. Okay. It's still smaller. Yeah. So that's the link. You can pause the video here if you want to copy the link. But otherwise, you can just search on Google. That's one of them. So if I'm going to go back to that link and show you uh, the definition of the template. Class means type name. So array type could be anything, int, float, double, user defined. But notice the size is n. So you have, uh, when you use the template, this will be the general parameter. Otherwise, when you declare, any general parameter has to be given a fixed value. And these are the functions of the template class. Certainly, when you go to this web page, you'll see more details. And this is the description syntax right here and I've used that in a code example I'm going to show you in a minute std colon colon is required if you don't do using name space std some people don't do that to me this is a extra syntactic poison rather than syntactic sugar so I'm going to show you my code now the declaration and the use so I'm going to go to Xcode where I wrote this and I've confirmed this in Xcode and GCC 4.8.1, but not with Visual Studio. So I'm not sure whether this code will work in Visual Studio or not. You can try it out, but it does work in Xcode 5.1, 5.0.2. Okay. So we include the array, number include array, because the template array class is in this include. <coughs> and I always use using name as Space std just to make my life a little simpler although you don't have to so the declaration of the array is like this word array type of array that you're going to be declaring length of the array that you're going to be declaring array name and then you have I think you have two options uh, this is the initialization curly braces and this is the array declaration curly braces and this one works we'll try another way in a second and then we can use this for range-based for loop to print the array. In range-based for loop, you're going to have a colon. On the right side of the colon will be the name of the collection, whether it's a vector, std array, template class, or even your normal array. Even your normal array works. On this side, we have the variable name that will actually make a copy from this collection here. 
or this array here, element by element, uh, sequential axis. And meaning of const is that don't change the value that is stored here, copied from there. And auto means assign data type by itself. By reference means just get the reference to it. You don't have to make a copy of it. So this is a little bit more efficient, although in int case, I don't think it makes any difference. So that's the meaning of all, all those. Const means don't change, don't allow to change the value in this collection. Auto means don't want to bother with data type. You decide <coughs> by reference means just get the reference, not by value. So more efficient. Efficiency, uh, immutability, data type. Okay. <clears throat> so when we do that, excuse me, we run it, succeeded, and we print the array. I think the other syntax I'll try in a second here. Some of you might find that simpler equal. And does it work? Well, let's try. That might work too. Okay, so that works either way. So either you can have this, or the second syntax is this one. That that's the C plus plus eleven syntax. So either one will work. Okay. I'm just going to keep this one because a lot of people are familiar with this. Okay. <clears throat> Second is that let's say I wanted to pass. I'm printing the array here, but I want to pass it to a function to print it. Uh, for that, you have to understand what the syntax of writing a function that takes a template as a parameter should be okay so really you want something as simple as that to work so and this could be a heart wrenching experience depending upon how much you know about template i knew a lot about template but forgot and this took me almost half of the day to figure it out how to do it correctly so <clears throat> Notice that I don't have to worry about when I declare this printer a function, the only variable parameter will be the n, the size of the array. Okay. So I have to declare template size t n. n is the value variable that I can pass, although it's size t type. <coughs> And that's because this is size t also. So this is the one that I, I need to specialize my function to, print array function to. OK? So <clears throat> int is not necessary because it's being passed here. So I don't need to put an int parameter here in the template. Just the size t because I need to specialize the size to certain value. OK? <clears throat> and then function argument will be pretty much same as here except 5 is a specific value for n, n is the general value so it gets changed over here and since you don't want to, uh, let's see, can you pass it by a value, there is no real advantage of doing that and I don't even know whether it will work or not. Yeah, it probably should, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We could try that a little bit later. But I prefer to pass template parameter by reference, and that's the name. So then this for loop we did earlier will work exactly the same in the function too. But really, the key is this syntax here and this syntax here, and if you don't know that, which it took quite a while for me to figure out. You can spend half of the day just doing that, although I think you will be able to figure it out. So now we'll get the same result, except now we are using the print array function. Okay, and of course, we get the same result as we did before. 
Okay, now the question is, can we pass it by value? And I'm not too fond of passing templates by value, but let's try that. And actually, I don't see any red line, so that should work as well. And yeah, it does work too. So you can pass it by value or by reference. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. But since I prefer to pass by reference, I can just do that. Uh, and I suppose it'll allow us to put const here too. So let's try that. Yeah, that works too. So that means if you don't want print to change the template uh, ARR, then it'll work. Okay, let's say I want it a sum of all the elements to be returned. So then I can write a sum function. You still need the template size t. Notice I put it on the top. If you wanted to use the prototype, then you can really do this. Okay, so let's do the prototype version. So let's do that here and just copy that here and delete uh, the function definition over here and put a semicolon there and that will work as well actually so let's bring it down just a bit okay it's not working well, I'm gonna just fold this thing. so this is the prototype version of the same thing and that works too god I mean after half days labor everything works that's amazing okay so let's say we wanted to write another function which will return the sum of all the array elements. I hate to call it array because it's really a template. Template does have array inside, but it, the behavior is quite different. All right, okay. So I'm gonna write another function, which is sum. And this prototype will be <coughs> int sum arguments will be same as const array int n and I'm still going to pass by reference arr okay okay here Array. Oh, why can't I copy this? Hmm. What was different with that one? I don't know. Maybe spelling error or something. Okay. So that does work. Not a problem. And now I'm going to write this function actually. So let's write that and I'll just write it above the print. Okay, so this time we declare a variable sum equal to zero. And I, this time still I can do the range based for loop, but I just don't do const this time. And Okay, so I won't do the const, and I'll just do sum plus equals. Ah, come on. Sum. Actually, you can still leave const because we're not going to change anything. You can still leave const. Actually. Nothing will change because we're not changing the array. We're only getting the copy to value of copy, return sum. Okay. So that'll work too. Why? Wow. Everything works now. Amazing. And then I'm going to go back to my main and pass. Just call the sum function. 
So in total equals sum and pass it the nums. And then print the total. See out uh, sum of all array elements. Okay, and that has to work. Come on. Okay, 15. 9 and 3 is 12, and 2 is 14, 15. Okay, so some works too. So I do believe as long as you remember how to write this template function, how to specify the template arguments properly, uh, this will work. And that was the major hurdle that I had. I shouldn't have had, but I did. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, let's see, can we do more to it? Yeah, sure, I guess we can. Um, if you go back to the C++ reference description, well, it has all these functions. Uh, begin will return iterator to the front and to the end. Uh, empty checks whether this container is empty. Size can tell you how many elements there are. And you can use fill, swap, sort. Sort is another one, I guess. That's an interesting one. We should do the sort. Actually, these are already sorted, so I'm going to have to unsort it. Uh, there is a sort function somewhere. Okay, where is it? I don't see it here, but I know it is there. Uh, it can be sorted. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I think sort you do it through the algorithm. Okay, got it. Okay, so you can also sort it, but you have to include number include algorithm. And then, this is already sorted, so I'm gonna randomize it. So let's say five, one, three, two, four. Okay, first make sure this one works as this. Yeah, it does. Okay, so sort is, uh, let's see, let's just sort it here. Just call sort. And then we just do nums dot begin, comma, nums dot end. Okay. So it will be sorted now, and I can pass it the printer again after sorting. So see out um, printing template array after sorting. And I can just call it the printer function again. Don't have to do any code here. So let's do that. And just run it again. There you go. See? Works beautifully. This was the original order after sorting. This is the order. So sort works also. Okay? Let's use the sort function in the algorithm class. Algorithm template. Algorithm header file, okay? Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna talk about today. This code will be, I'll try to put it on my blog. Uh, otherwise, otherwise I don't know. Okay, I'll try to put it on my blog. Once again, this is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD. I just discussed C++ 11 tutorial 3. 
using stdra template class thank you for watching